In this video, we're going to take a look at how airlines build their fare structures and specifically why we find so many fares for the same airline in a given market. And to do that, we're going to examine a demand curve for a sample market. So let's choose a sample market. Let's say we want to look at the demand for JFK, JFK Miami. And let's, let's assume we know what the demand curve looks like for JFK Miami. So let me draw a demand curve over here. Uh, we're going to draw my vertical axis and then my horizontal axis. I think they could be a little bit bigger. I want to give myself enough room to draw here. So let me draw that a little bit, a little bit bigger. Vertical axis and vertical axis and horizontal axis. That's good. Line those up nice. And then let me add in a downward sloping demand curve. Downward sloping demand curve. And put a little bit of a bend to it. Oh, that didn't work out so well. Let me try that again. Downward sloping demand curve. A little bit of a bend to it. Good. Um, hmm. I'm having a little bit of trouble with that. Downward sloping. Downward sloping. Okay, good. And then um, here, let me just move that out a bit. Uh, actually, one more time. Give me one more chance to draw a nice demand curve. Oh, I'm liking that one. Okay. Just move that out just a little bit. Good, good. And then let's label our axes P for price on the vertical axes, axis, excuse me. P for price. And on the horizontal axis, we have Q for quantity. Okay, good. Let me go ahead and copy and paste that so we can use it twice. Crop, crop, copy. Okay, copy and paste. Good. Now we have two demand curves we can work with. Okay. Let's start out by assuming that the airline only has one price in this market. So they have one price for all seats from JFK to Miami. And recall that revenue is the product of price and quantity. So let me write that down here just to remind you. Revenue equals revenue equals price times quantity okay so you know for any for any product let's say you have uh, widgets and you're selling your widgets for ten dollars a piece and you sell five widgets then your revenue from those widgets is going to be fifty dollars in our case it's seats instead of widgets but that's how you calculate revenue so if the airline only had one price in the market, they would choose the price that maximized revenue. So let's say they determined that that price is represented by P1. So they choose the price that maximizes revenue, and let's call that P1. And at P1, they sell Q1 seats, Q1 seats. So the revenue that they will capture by pricing their product at P1 will be P1 times Q1, okay? The total revenue from pricing their product at P1 is P1 times Q1. And if you recall, revenue is represented by this area under the curve. So if we shade this in, this area here, this rectangle, is 
is the, the amount P, P1 times Q1. This rectangle is, you know, the, the uh, area of a rectangle is the um, uh, one side times the other. This side is a length of Q1. This side is a length of P1. So P1 times Q1 equals the total revenue from this price. And indeed, under this demand curve, all of this area represents revenue. But choosing this price will only capture this amount of revenue. So that's fine. An airline or any firm would want to price their product in such a way that they maximize revenue. So they choose the point along the demand curve that maximizes revenue. So let's say this point is uh, representing uh, X customers. So X customers at this point on the demand curve uh, will be willing to pay P1 for this many seats. Well, let's take a look at what's happening on the rest of the demand curve then. Down here, below P1, on this portion of the curve down here, down here, there are customers who are willing to fly from JFK to Miami, but they're not willing to pay P1. Let's say there are some customers, uh, Y, who are at this point in the curve, let's use a different color here, uh, at this point of the curve are willing to pay some price P2, and you're willing to purchase Q2 seats. So at this price, the airline could sell more seats to the Y customers, but at a lower price. Up here, above, above the demand for P1, there are customers who are willing to pay higher than P1. So let's choose a point here. Let's call those Z customers who are willing to pay P3, albeit there are fewer of them, fewer seats would be sold at that fare, but there are customers who are willing to pay above P1 and pay P3 for Q3 seats. And remember, the demand curve is the representation of willingness to pay by consumers in the market. So, so now the airline looking at this demand curve we'll see that there are a couple of opportunities that are, have gone by here, right? If they're pricing their product at P1, there are customers along the demand curve who are not willing to pay P1. They're willing to pay something less, but they're not willing to pay P1. And because the price is above their willingness to pay, they won't travel. So this revenue, this area under the demand curve is gonna be a lost opportunity. Up here, there are customers who are willing to pay P3, but since there's only one price in the market P1, those customers will travel, but they will pay a lower fare than they're, than they're willing to pay. So this we call consumer surplus. So the consumers are benefiting in this area of the curve because they're willing to pay more than the airline is charging. So the airline might look at this and say, wow, we could we could sell more seats if we lower our fare, or we could actually charge a higher fare and get lower quantity. But if you were to, if you were to look, let's see if we can uh, shade over this. Uh, let's see what color I'll use here, orange. If my price was P3 and I only sold Q3 quantity, then my revenue would be P3 times Q3. And it may be hard to see this here, but this area of this reg rectangle, P3 times Q3, is a smaller area than P1 times Q1. So they could raise the fare, but they would actually lower revenue. Similarly, at P2, they could lower the fare, sell more seats, and capture this area. But this area, too, is smaller than the original area of P1 and Q1. So lowering the fare would also reduce revenue. So they have their optimal fare at P1, and it doesn't make sense for them to move off of that fare to either raise it or lower it because that would reduce revenue. But they are concerned that they are 
they're missing out on this consumer surplus and they're not getting anything here um, for seats that could, could have been sold at a lower fare. So let's go over to our other demand curve here and let's write in, let's write in those prices and quantities again. So we had P3 up here, P1, and P2. And let's see if we draw some vertical lines. Maybe that's not very vertical, but I think you get the idea. Uh, Q3 at this price, Q2 at this price, and Q1 at this price. So now, if the airline, instead of having one price and considering whether to increase or decrease that price, they kept that original price, the Q1 price, and then added in two different fares. Now, they would be able to capture customers who are willing to pay P3 would purchase Q3 seats, so they would get this revenue from that fare. Then the customers who are willing to pay P1 would buy Q2 seats and they'd get this additional revenue from this overlapping rectangle. And then customers who wouldn't fly at all under the old structure would now be able to travel at P2 and the airline would also capture this revenue. So with more fares in the market, they're able to capture more revenue under the curve. Now they are still missing out some opportunity. Up here in this portion of the demand curve, there are customers who are willing to pay P3, excuse me, greater than P3. They'll get the seats for P3. Over here, there are customers willing to pay more than P1, but they're only gonna pay P1. Similarly, these customers would be willing to pay more than P2, but they'll get it for P2. And down here, there's, there's no fare in the market to satisfy this demand, so these customers won't travel because there's no fare uh, that they'd be, be willing to pay. So the more fares in the market, the more area that they're able to capture. And of course, you could, ca you could carry this to a extreme degree. You could have 20 fares in the market, 30 fares in the market. Of course, that would become too cumbersome. There's already enough fares in the markets. Um, so the airline will try to choose the number of fares that they can manage, that the consumers will understand, and that competitively will be sustainable in the market so that they can capture as much of the revenue opportunity that exists under this curve. 